Welcome back to the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. We're back on location here in the Hall of Fame, back in NT, back here at Goundry Street behind the old public library. Today's guest, all the way from Texas, graduate of 1972, played for NT in the years of 70 and 1971, the one and the only Bill Smidella. Bill, welcome. Welcome back home. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. For people who are not, don't remember you or are not familiar with you, talk about your upbringing in North Tonawanda. Well, we uh, Catholic family with a strong father figure didn't didn't hesitate to you know whip us if we were late and uh, kept us on the line and had a mother who was the same and had uh, twelve aunt, aunts and uncles on Third Avenue. You know they lived on there and they all couldn't go anywhere without being caught. You know because they would squeal on us or get us in trouble. So pretty strong. Uh, Family upbringing, yes. You grew up in the Gratwick section of actually, town. Actually, actually went to Gratwick, uh, junior, uh, Gratwick Elementary, yes. Drake, seventh grade, and then uh, high school. A ninth grade campus also. The the uh, one on Payne Avenue. I think it's on Payne. Talk about your football experience at North Tonawanda. Oh, it was great. I love Vetter. He, I really got along with him. I, I mean, I played football for him, baseball for him, and uh, one of the significant moments in my life is that my uh, junior year. That's the last year Vetter coached baseball. He put me on, on the field ahead of some of the seniors, and they walked off the field. They were so mad. I, I don't want to name the people. I don't want to embarrass them, but they got so mad that I started instead of them that they walked off the field. What positions did you play at NT playing football? I was a, uh, a defensive end and a tailback. Unique combination. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I had, uh, hard to believe this, but I had 13 scholarship offers from different colleges throughout the area. But my mother was, was, uh, had diabetes and she begged me not to go. I almost was going to go to Tampa University, and two years later she died. What do you remember about the, uh, the TNT rivalry? Oh, it was intense. It was intense. Whether it was baseball, whether it was football, I could remember that. Uh, and Hanawanda had a left-hander throwing 90 miles an hour. And uh, there's another funny story I got, too. I, uh, I was, he was throwing so fast, I was swinging five inches over the ball. And actually, I went three for four. And the bad thing that happened is the next time we played him, somebody came up to me and I said, oh, they said, oh there's all these scouts in the, in, the, in the stands. And they said, I go, oh, they're coming to see him. They said, no, Smiley, they're coming to see you too. Struck out three times. <laughs> I was so nervous. <laughs> but... It was, it was exciting. And like I say, playing for Vetter was uh, wonderful. I really, uh, really, he was a wonderful man. Really did. You also paid, played for Chuck Ramsey his first I did. Year. I did. How, now, how different was the, the transition going uh, from a Vetter system to Chuck Ramsey? Well, uh, my, my regrets on that is, see, we, uh, we had a Milk Bowl championship team, and we actually went to McGeesport, and that same group of guys was there. But when Ramsey came in, he really kind of leaned on his bishop uh, players too much. You know what I mean? He kind of, and we we ended up losing some games we shouldn't have lost, and and I didn't even run tailback that year for him. You know what I mean? It was just such a mess. I mean, there were a dozen guys trying to play tailback, and I said, "I'll oh, forget it. I'll just play defensive end." And that's actually where I got scholarship thrown for for defensive end. Do you have any stories about Coach Vetter and, and, and playing with, you played with guys like Craig Nebelecki and Yeah, I did play with Craig. Uh, I got a story with Craig Nebelecki. This is a funny one. Of course, I'm on defensive end and Craig's on, on, in the interior. And he goes, smite off, smite off. Keep him off me, keep him off me. So I was reaching out and slapping this guy right across the head with a, with a forearm, right across the helmet. And about the third quarter, the referee goes, one more time, you're out of the game. <laughs> He's going to throw me out. <laughs> Because Nevs was getting beat by this guy, and I just kept whacking. You know, before he would come down, I'd reach out, and, and I had pads all up both of my arms, and I'd whack him across the, the face and stand him up, and then Nevs was doing good. That's what I remember. Were the empty practices more intense than some of the games? Oh, my God. That's not even close. I couldn't even pull my shirt off. We were exhausted. Guys were running the end zone, puking. They were running so hard. The games were a breeze. The games were nothing compared to our practices. Ugh. And then I remember one thing, we had, uh, Water was out there, and that's when Mazer was still playing. I was on the team, and, and he was, you know, Mazer was like 300 pounder, and, and he breaks out of water, and Mazer goes, we don't want any water. He comes out, he dumps. 
<laughs> it was terrible. We were all dying, you know, waiting to get. And then they were pumping us up with salt pills. Ugh, that was the worst thing in the world. That, when you look back at it, that really wasn't uh, a medical thing to do. So, do you have any regrets from your high school football career? Maybe one, and the only one is. See, I only I uh, didn't play my my uh, freshman year, and I had actually one more year of eligibility. And if I would have failed in or, uh, uh, health. I could have came back and played one more year. You know what I mean? It was like I was graduating, and I didn't even tell the coaches till the very end. And then they were, oh, oh, come on, do it, do it, you know. And and I didn't. I ended up, you know, graduating and going on to college. But I was gonna uh, actually fail health so that I could come back and play football again for NT in, in the fall. You know, one more sem one more semester or half a year. So, but I didn't do it. Was that something that was commonly done by other players? Yeah, they did some red shirt. I think Ron Woods did that. He did a, uh, or what do they call that? Brown, not red shirt, isn't that when you play an extra year or you play your, a miss post, a year post, and then you play post a year? Graduate. Post graduate. Post graduate year. Yeah. yeah, I think Ron Woods does. And I actually drove by his gravel place over there. We came around the back way. You know, we came out of Buffalo and we didn't go over Grand Island Bridge. We went around, you know, through NT and I went through my old, old thing and we turned down one street, said Ron Woods gravel thing. So I guess that's what he's doing still, you know. Our, he was a good guy too. I like Ron. Who who were some of your uh, the most influential coaches that you had at, at NT? Well, better of course, and uh, the offensive course. I lose my mind. What was his name? Um, Williams was Chuck Williams. Chuck Williams. He was probably really significant for me. He, he that's what I that's when I switched over. I was running tailback and a defensive end, and we had so many people running for running back. And uh, he, he, whatever, kind of talked me into it because they were going to two platoon it. You know what I mean? That was the first time that they were going to do it. That's what Ramsey wanted to do. But I used to do both ways. You know what I'm saying? And, but, and the problem was, and I, that, well, actually, that's one of my regrets is actually not running tailback because a lot of guys were great in practice. They, they ran the win. But then when the games got, they seemed to tighten up. And actually, I actually played better during the game than I, I couldn't really put it out in practice, but I could really accelerate in games. I really got fired up about it. So. In your estimation, were you a better tailback or a defensive yes. end? Oh, um, both. I wasn't really big enough for being a, a defensive end, but I was fast. You know, I was really lightning fast. And what I would do is, when these guys, I would read them, you know, either they'd come and block towards me or they'd kind of set up. And as soon as they would set up, I used to have a cage, you know, in full arm, full armor almost. I had pads all the way over my arms, and I'd run as fast as I could and I'd hit him in the head. You know, back then you could do spearing and all kinds of stuff. And about the third quarter, when they would set up, they would, uh, they would go like this, wait for me to hit him. I'd just run around. <laughs> it was kind of, it worked pretty well. And I think that's probably why I got those offers. You know what I mean? Because I was pretty, and that's another thing that happened. I remember Bobby, uh, well, he was a tailback too, but Vetter just loved it. Because when I was a running back, all I did was run into people, you know, I'd like get down low as I could and hit them, basically spear them, whatever, how low they would hit and knock them back. And Vetter loved that hard-nosed football. You know, we were running that power formation and he loved it. He just loved that kind of football. With that power formation, do you think with uh, that the game was passing him by and that's why he retired? Um, a lot of teams are going to more modern offenses and he was, he Either the single wing or or the single or wing. the T, T and he, he didn't want to vary from it. Well, you know the the whole thing is that was such a punishing offense that a lot of these teams couldn't handle it. You know what I mean? It had its real value, I think, in a lot of ways. You know, then we went to that more of that pro set, it just messed us up. You know, it really didn't do real well. I, I didn't think we didn't have that good a year that year, so it was okay. I think we lost a couple games. And then we're out of it. You know, we we lost a late second game to to trot, and that's another regret I have is listening to Tom Murphy. God, he get me so mad. He's he was playing behind me, right? And every time the guy would the ends, I was hitting him. And then Tom was supposed to say, "Okay, you go in, and I'm gonna watch him." And this was the last play of the game, and he goes. Smiley, I got him, I got him, just go in there. So I go running in there, and of course the, the quarterback throws it, and I almost block, you know, he throws it to the flea flicker, he throws it to the other end, and the guy threw it to the end zone, and we lost that game to trot. It was like a crushing loss, but I should have just kept it. That's the guy that got the touchdown. He's the one that I would have prevented from going out. I, I was hitting him and hitting him and hitting him, so he couldn't get out of the out of the line, you know, and, and he, Murphy goes, I got him, I got him, and, and he goes, oh, my bad, I'm sorry. I thought, oh, my God, you idiot. <laughs> but he was just kind of those, you know, those guys, one of those kind of, whatever, it doesn't matter. 
What do you recall about the old Niagara Frontier Football League? Some people have said that that was probably the best football league in, in all of New York State. Oh, I, I don't have anything compared to, but it was pretty rough. You know, it was pretty. Anybody that could make our team had to be fairly good athlete. You know what I mean? It was really. We had a, it was really hard nosed. I mean, really tough. You had to be tough to take it. Like I say, the practices were so hard, and I think that prepped us to play really hard nosed football. Actually, one of the highlights is when we beat the number two state, uh, when the, uh, Kenmore, or, uh, Kenmore East. What is it? Ken Kenmore East. East. Kenmore East. It was like in the news all over the place. We finally, see, when Ramsey came in, he kind of set up our, our team, and we were so disoriented. We lost a few games, but when we finally got it together, Kenny's was ranked like number two in the state, and we buried him. What was it? Twenty-eight nothing. Twenty-eight nothing. We killed him, and that's when we finally got it together. And to me, that was the same football team, our Memphis Championship football team we had with Bobby Schweigler and I think Jerry Sikowski was in there. All a lot of the guys that I played with all the way up through 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 uh, school. Yeah, and that was we actually. And and it was a funny thing. I just saw Jerry. We went out had some pizza. And he got to, actually, a lot of people don't realize this, that the reason he's quit football is he actually got hit by a car. I don't even know this. And it jammed his arm, and they thought he just went off the world, you know, like a hippie or something. But he actually couldn't play anymore. But he was really a really good quarterback and a good catcher, too. Did, did it matter that you were playing small schools and other big schools in the Niagara Frontier League? You know, it seemed to be on paper that it was the David versus Goliath. Did it really matter to you guys? Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know one way or the other. I wasn't even aware of those kind of things. I wasn't aware. I don't. Preseason camp for George Vetter's teams. Describe how that was where. Oh, God. It was exhausting. I mean, just like I say, after the, the practice, guys were, were running, running. Guys were puking in the end zone. I couldn't even pull my shirt off. I was so exhausted. Soaking wet. You had to have somebody else grab your shirt and pull it off your, pull it over your head. It was exhausting. People don't talk about John Pluwak. What's your memories of, of, of Plu? I think he, wasn't he our trainer or he, is that what Plu, I can't hardly remember. Uh, I was, then he was our trainer, he took care of the equipment and stuff like that. I'm not sure. I believe he was the equipment manager and, yeah. and was a trainer as well. He was too. a good guy, he was a good guy. Real good guy. But you know, the one, there's another regret I had. I got, I had a helmet with a cage on it, right? And we, I went back the next year to get it and I got it and it was like tight, you know? And then uh, Zabalski kept saying, hey, you want to try? You want to change? You want to change? And me, being so naive, I, he gave me a helmet and a fed. I said, okay. And it really wasn't the ideal thing for me. And then what does Zabalski do? Get Plu, Plu to change the, the, the cage and put it in the other one. <laughs> so I lost my cage. You know, I had a big old cage. And that's what I would do is ram into people as hard as I could. You know, spy, back then you could do anything. You know what I mean? We used to hold on to guys and, and, and hit them. There was one time they called us the Wild Bunch. And the reason they did that is they kick the ball back to the, to the kicker, and he fumbles the ball, and it goes rolling off there, and nobody goes for the ball. He just bam, bam, bam. They just kept hitting that guy. We did. I was part of it, by the way. <laughs> we didn't even care about the ball. <laughs> We've talked about uh, several things in this video so far. What would you like to talk about that I haven't brought up? It was, I don't know. It's just a good experience, good guys, good friends. I've known forever. I mean, even uh, Keith there, we played basketball. I was telling my wife about it in sixth grade. Remember that, Keith? We yep. played basketball and we won. And we, I, I know all these kids all my life. That's the whole thing. We hung out. We neighborhood. And, you know, everybody had the same thing. And it was such an interesting... Everybody had the same kind of parents, too. And I, the reason I say that is I remember I had a rebound date with a gal called Betty Frenasiak. And, and I was walking out of the, out of the, the, the dance... And I go, I gotta go. And I took off a ruddy. And nobody laughed. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Because they had the same kind of parents. If I was late, if you were late five minutes, you got whipping. You know what I mean? And so you didn't, and if you got whipped twice, you were stupid because you couldn't figure it out, you know? When you drive down Payne Avenue and go past the junior high school, you ever turn in and go by the old stadium? No, no. We didn't go by that. We went down Oliver Street. My wife said, hey, there's Oliver Street. And I go, oh, let me turn down it. And then I went down the street I grew up on. It's Felton Street. And, and my brother-in-law said, is it still standing? I go, yep, it's still there. <laughs> the old house I, I grew up in. 103 Felton is where I grew up on. Since you left NT, tell people what, what you've been doing with your life. Well, uh, let's see. I got married a couple times, three times. And I have my best wife now. That's the best I've ever had. 
got married, uh, have a son. Uh, that's he's uh, he was did really well, baseball player, uh, college level. He he uh, he uh, called me one day from UTSA and, and said, Dad, I can't pass my classes and play baseball. I said, Okay, so I took up golf. What a waste. I taught uh, 25 years of high school, physics and chemistry. Wonderful, wonderful, enjoyed it, uh, great time. Actually, I started in middle school and then went on to high school. And the middle school guy was offering me the world and I turned it down. Um, I fish, I'm a, I, I finished sixth in a national tournament in, in bass fishing. I have a bass boat, I still fish and love it. My wife and I are talking about getting a pontoon boat. I'm trying to co convince her to get back out there. I love fishing. Uh, it's just, Texas is wonderful. There's so many opportunities to, to I fish year round, 12 months a year. There's no, there's no break like in, in NT. I love the weather. Uh, greatest thing I ever did was go out there. I, I went in there, I couldn't get a job here in, in town, well, part time and all this kind of stuff. So I, my brother went there, married his wife, uh, Janet, they, they didn't stay together forever. And he said, come on out here. So I, I go out there and, and there's, I'm sitting in front of a, elementary teacher or interviewer and I said I really don't want to teach elementary they picked up my papers dropped it on a middle school and they hired me that day and I've been working ever since uh, until I retired 11 years ago so but it's really been good and I want to tell you retirement is good <laughs> better than you think if you were meeting somebody at a cocktail party and they, they want you got in a conversation about where you grew up what would you tell them about growing up in North Tonawanda oh it was wonderful it's, uh, uh, I was just telling my wife, I don't want to move back here because of the weather, but it, it's just beautiful country. We're in the falls and it's just gorgeous. You know, the, the leaves turn. I used to fish all up and down the Finger Lakes. I used to trout fish. I used to uh, fish for pike all over the place. I had a, a brother that my, my brother Frank was uh, uh, seven or eight, year, eight, ten years older than me. And we used to go fishing all the time. We fished all the Finger Lakes. We fished Takwa. We fished Lake Erie, uh, Dunkirk. That's what I just saw my friend Jerry, and that's what he talked about is going to Dunkirk and fishing. And I really love fishing more than anything, really. It's just a blast. And like I say, what Texas opens up is year-round fishing. 12 months a year, is, I almost fish every week. So. Terrific. Billy Smidella, thank you so much for joining me here today. It was a pleasure. Very interesting insight that you have in your playing career at North Tonawanda. Thank you again. God bless and be well. Thank you.